So NeoVim 0.5 is about to be released if it hasn't yet already, and with it will be a built-in language server client, and today I'd like to give a quick overview and possibly shine some light over some misconceptions that you may have about it. So this is going to be the approximate overview, and we're going and we're going to be going from left to right, so why don't we just start off with the language servers. So the language servers are the actual heavy lifters. They're going to be doing the things such as doing the computations to provide you with things such as code actions, autocomplete, and that sort of thing. So this is where the actual features happen at the language servers. Now I have here three examples, PyWrite for Python, ClangD for the C family languages, and TS Server for JavaScript and TypeScript. And there's a lot more. You can find a really big list over here in config.md under the nvim lsp config project. And these are the actual servers. They don't come installed. They're not built in. You have to install them yourself. Now, for a quick example, we can install TS server right now. So I go to the terminal window. That would be TypeScript language server. And there we go. And that's all there is to it. So once you have these language servers, then make sure they're like available to use in your path, that sort of thing. But as long as you have that, you're doing fine. Because that will then interact with the built-in LSP client. And I put here an exclamation mark because you have to make sure that you're using NeoVim 0.5. If 0.5 hasn't been released for you yet, you might want to consider building from source, um, building head from source because the functionality already exists. It just hasn't been officially released. And once you have that, the next step is to install the nvim lsp config plugin, um, which is this one. And it basically provides a bunch of configurations. And it helps do a couple of things. So if we go to the FAQ, launching a language server when a matching file type is detected, sending the correct initialization options and settings, and attaching new buffers into your project into the language server. So it's pretty useful. It allows you to uh, declare configurations for different language servers, as you can see here. So this is the other part that you might be working with a lot of the time. So I've kind of color coded these to match the actual language servers, but we go back here. This is very minimal. As you can see that I'm actually not, this is like Lua code. I'm not really sending anything to the setup function, but just know that there's a lot of options you can have. If you go down here, there are a lot of default values, as you can see here. And for example, something that you might want to do is add an onAttach function. And in my case, what I do in onAttach is I just add a lot of different function calls to set key maps. So maybe I want a key map to hover, maybe another one for definition, and maybe to trigger code actions. And you can do these for all of your different language servers. Some of them you might want to specialize, so you might want to write them individually. The other ones you might just want to simply go over in like a small loop and just do the default, right? So over here, I'm just running through most of my language servers and doing the default on attach. But for a TS server, I want to do something different. Hopefully that makes sense. And finally, the last step is just edit projects. Now, if you open up a project, it should automatically trigger the language server to start because you have the nvim lsp config plugin. Now, also keep in mind that you can change these default values. For example, if you want your root project directory to change, you provide a function that will return the root directory. And there's other things, for example, over here, right? You have analysis, auto search paths, use library code for types. Now you should definitely take a read through this because it'll provide you all the different options on a per language server basis, which means that you can get more out of your configuration. Now, just to zoom back out, that's the entire overview of the built-in language server client and how it interacts with your configuration with language servers and with LSP config. The key takeaway is that the language servers you have to install yourself, which will do all of the heavy lifting. The configurations are what allow you to customize the language server and all the rest of the stuff is the glue that makes it all work together.